So, you know, we, we've, we, we've talked about identifying the persona of, 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 of who's your customer, but um, you also want to show a bigger picture. You want to give some signal that this isn't, isn't a one-off, that there's actually a lot of people like Chuck out there. So the, the next part of, of the, the process is to identify the next 10 customers. So here's a, a worksheet that can be used um, for this. Um, so we have a table with 10 rows. You've got a customer name, you've got some information, title of the person, their contact details, demographic and psychographic fit. Um, so what you can see here is that the, the, the middle set of columns here um, are all about the fit. I'll, I'll try and stop waving my hands at the, at, the, at the camera and try and move the mouse. You can see my, me moving my mouse around on screen, can you? No? Yes, yes. Thank yes, okay, you. great. That, that, that'll be easier rather than me pointing at, at different things. Um, so in the middle columns here, you can see the fish in terms of demographics, the psychographics, the use case that they will use your product for, the value proposition and overall. And then there's a level of engagement. So the, the whole idea here is that we are trying to find a signal of 10 customers who will have a strong potential level of engagement with the product that you will eventually um, build. So um, you can, of course, customize it as you want to. But let me show you two examples of, of a good and a, and a bad instance of this. So this is for one particular team, team one. And you can see that they've got um, a legend here at the bottom, which is, and this is just showing the fit. So the first, the first column general info, info isn't shown in here. Um, you can see in terms of the fit ABC, basically excellent, medium and poor with the, with the different aspects. So, you know, great demographic fit, great psychographic fit, use case, value proposition, and, and so on. And, and the source is matching the persona, level interest high. So that's obviously very high signal there. Um, but if you look at some of the rest of them, you can see some sources here, school friends, neighbors, family friends, classmate, alumni, friend of a friend. What do you think is happening here? Um, there is like an emotional bias because in a way these people are connected. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a bias. So, you know, it, it's, uh, you may have heard of this book, the, the Mom Test by Rob Fitzpatrick. And it's really around how do you sell a product to um, anybody, you know? So, you know, people, you know, people's, the premises, people's moms will always say, oh, it's fantastic, the best thing I've ever seen, you know? You want to have a very unbiased opinion that, that uh, somebody will buy your product. So there's, there's certainly some interesting signals here in terms of, you know, got a couple from Persona, there's uh, one, two, three from the persona that are, are, are high match. However, there's also a bunch of other ones. And maybe they match the persona, but maybe they don't. Um, friends, classmates, and so on. Um, there may be some bias in there, and they may be just telling you what you want to hear. So one of the key issues is when, when people go out with a product and, and they, they try and get some kind of commitment from somebody, um, and somebody says, yeah, you know, it sounds great, really great. Um, and you know, when you've built it, come back to me and I'd like to see it again. And they, they, they just can't be negative about it because they are friends or they have some pre pre-existing relationship. So you want to be able to show that you can sell what you have to a person where that doesn't exist. So here's team number two. Now, of course, this is a very ideal one here because you've got lots of A's in terms of the matching and there's one or two B's, but in general, I suppose they, you know, obviously it's great to have the fish, but it's also good to be able to see the level of interest um, so you can say you see one, two, three, four, four are saying they need it right now, very high level of interest. Um, and then there's six that say they need to know more, but they are interested. So that's positive. Ideally, you would be moving towards the one where they want it now and are willing to say that as soon as this is um, produced, we'll be, you know, we'll be willing to go. What you can see though as well is that this table here says early stages in terms of contact. So you know, maybe as, as the, the the relationship develops more, maybe some of these needs to know more, but interest might, might move up to a level of interest. So you're trying to push them as far towards strong, very high level of interest rather than sounds nice, uh, show me when you've made it. You want, to, you want those kind of letters that are saying, when you've built this, I'm willing to pay this amount of money for it. So you, you want as strong signals as possible. Um, so, you know, there's been uh, other instances of, of this. This is a, a product um, from uh, an MIT project called BuildLine. Um, and this particular one, they had actually a multi-sided um, 
platform, which actually had got three different customers. So it's a bit more complicated. They had a platform that connected designers, suppliers, and contractors. You can see DSC here on the top of the slide. And they basically tried to, again, figure out for those customers, what was the fit and what was the intent. And uh, you can see that they've, they've only got five of them shown here for each of the different types. But if you do have a multi-sided platform where there is, you know, think of uh, you know, eBay where you've got suppliers, you've got sellers and buyers, um, you have to basically define the next 10 customers for each side of the platform. So for this one here, they would be trying to do 10 customers for designers, suppliers, and contractors, okay? So it's a lot more work, but then you've got a lot more you have to validate that all sides of the platform are going to meet the priorities of, of the customers and therefore you have to do this for each, for each, um, each party. Um, you can see, you know, intent, there's a couple there of not yet, yes, not available, um, and, and so on. And I suppose, you know, they, they, they realized actually after they went through this exercise that perhaps they had focused on uh, one segment that, that was incorrect and they need to revise that segment and reevaluate re the priorities of the customer because they weren't getting strong enough signals from one um, cohort in this multi-sided platform that they were on the right track. So again, this could be an exercise to help you figure out if there is a particular blockage that you might need to go back and maybe revise whether that's you know, moving to a slightly different market or um, otherwise. But again, it's a signal in terms of um, will there be a problem later on down the road? Because if you, if you can't get 10 customers to very strong commitment at this stage, well, how are you going to expect to get it when you actually build your product and are trying to, to, uh, to sell it to them later on? Okay, so it's a good um, sanity check that you're, that you're going down the right, the right route. Um, so that's just a little bit about the, the, uh, the, that, that use case. So uh, that leads us on to what can you do for your customer? 